Hey, it's so great to be with you today. Um, I'm so excited. Finally feeling a little bit better getting in here live. I missed you guys. Um, so we are going to be talking about three signs. I'm going to actually give you more, but three signs. <laughs> you still need to heal from divorce if you're in the dating pool, right? If you have gone back to the dating pool and you're starting to notice some things. I'm going to give you some signs that you are not ready. You still have some inner work to do. And it's important that you know this before you get into a serious relationship. Let me just tell you, and I'm going to tell you why it's so important to do the inner work in just a moment. And so look, at the end of this, I'd love for you to, to tell me what's your biggest takeaway from my video today, what resonates with you, um, that I'm talking about today. And if you want to dive deeper into your individual situation and you need help um, while you're in the dating sphere and you don't want to have another divorce again, reach out to me. I'm going to put the link below and we'll set up some time to chat. Okay, a little nose itch there, right there. All right, so, so why is it important to do the inner work? Like, who cares, right? Oh, I just married the wrong woman. She was controlling. She was vindictive. You know, I'll just meet the right partner this time around. Well, here's a fun fact. Um, about 70% of second marriages end in divorce. Yep, that's true. I mean, if you think about that, like, like that's a mind-blowing statistic. Um, and I, I, a lot of us in this group, me included, have been married multiple times. So before you say, oh, I'm never getting married again, I'm never getting married again. I mean, come on, people want to be loved and we want to give love and being married has its benefits. You get to share so much like it, it, it's, you know, has a lot of pros to it. So I know if you're in the, the darkest trauma of your divorce, yes, you may not be ready for this message but for those of you that are kind of further along in your journey you know it's like it's so nice to be loved and in a committed relationship it has so many benefits to it so you know but the truth is if if you are remarried the chance of it lasting is is minimal i mean it's 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 statistically speaking and i'm going to tell you why this is it's 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 not a surprise because i'm in a blended family i'm in a step family so I understand how difficult it is, but if you haven't done the work and taken responsibility and known, like, where didn't I show up in my last relationship? What were the signs that I missed early on? Where can I show up more completely in this next relationship and have the tools to communicate better, to um, undo your own damage, to, to manage expectations in a relationship and do all that? Um, I, you know, it's, it's like, it's, you know, you wouldn't get on a plane crash if you knew that it, it was going to crash at a likelihood of 70%. But most people do that because, listen, 40% of families in America are blended families, are step families. It's just kind of like a secret we have in our, our culture. 40% of us, me, but I bet if you if if you really dug deeply into people's personal lives and because of what I do for a living, people are very open with me. <laughs> I just have that personality. People just tell me personal stuff all the time. And maybe it's because I share so much in my social media and I'm very open and honest and vulnerable. So people people kind of open up to me very quickly. And so 40% of people are in blended families. But the reason that they end at such a high rate, we, we bring our baggage into the relationship. And, you know, I was one of those people, you know, um, if I hadn't done the work, I, I really do feel that Pete and I would not have made it, you know, because you've got, you know, your own baggage, they've got their baggage, and you've got a, an ex, and they're going to, you know, in invert into your relationship and they might probably most likely have an ex and then you've got stepkids and bio kids and so all the additional stress and lack of support lack of resources for step families and lack of knowledge right it really it, it's no surprise to me 
that that they end at the rate that they do. So it's really important to do the inner work so you can have a healthy, happy relationship in the future and avoid divorce and putting your children through this again. Oh, it's just, it's terrible. Um, you know, if you can avoid divorce, it's it's very important that you do the work. And, and not only if you just decide, hey, I don't want to get married again, but if you want to have a happy, healthy relationship, listen, it starts with you. So start with yourself. And I tell you, when I work with my clients and they're in the dating sphere, not only do they show up differently when they're dating or with their romantic partners, but I mean, they they know so much about themselves and they create healthy boundaries with themselves that they're, they communicate better with family members, sisters, moms, dads, all these other relationships improve too. So doing the work on yourself, it just has a ripple effect and, and even in work. So let's talk about the signs that you still need some healing, guys. Okay, so I think this is a pretty easy one. And I you, probably you've been on dates where you've experienced this, right? Where you're on a date and she brings up her ex on the first damn date. You're like, oh, damn, I shouldn't have gone on this date, <laughs> right? So if you were talking about your ex in the first couple of dates, you have some some emotional baggage that you need to resolve with your ex before you move on. Okay. So if, if you're doing that, that's, that's a big sign. Okay. If you are attracting the same women over and over and over, that's a sign like women that like low quality women that you, you, that's not what you want. Right. So if you're tending to, to, attract the same women or the same women are gravitating towards you that's a sign that you need to work through some boundary stuff I guarantee it I promise you because I, I work with a lot of nice guys nice guys and they're great guys but they haven't done the inner work yet that's what they do with me so that they can show up and be an authentic um, version of themselves stand in their masculine energy and believe Believe you me, strong, independent, confident women want that, okay? They don't want a doormat. So if, if that's what you're experiencing, you've got to do the inner work, okay? If you are, oh, and y'all have seen this, I know you've seen this in the group, right? Those guys that jump into the dating pool to escape loneliness. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit of kind of inner reflection, I'm not going to lie. But if you are just like lonely and you're trying to distract yourself from the lonely, I see so many men do this, men do this way more than women, then you are not ready. Okay. You are not ready. And listen, I'll tell you what, the great thing is the loneliness is actually can be the key to your healing. For me, my loneliness and surrendering and consciously surrendering to my loneliness during my divorce was pivotal. For me and healing all my trauma, all my abandonment issues. I mean, it, it was life changing. So if you feel like loneliness is driving you in ways, it's time to do the work and, and you don't have to spend years agonizing over it and doing what I did and having multiple divorces and all that garbage. You don't have to do it. So for me, understanding, oh, damn, I was lonely during my marriage and I'm lonely now I'm sitting crying in this strange woman's basement that I don't know and I'm crying and lonely and yet I wanted to go out and escape that loneliness I wanted to to go date and you know use men to make myself feel good about myself and so that was the epiphany for me that was my changing moment in my life that was a defining moment I'll never forget that moment you know it's just it's one of those aha moments like oh shit like <laughs> I don't love myself that's why I'm so lonely and so let me tell you guys if you feel too vulnerable to handle rejection that's also a key that you're not ready you're gonna get rejected okay you're gonna get rejected and moreover you're gonna have to reject women because you need to have healthy boundaries, there are going to be times you're going to have to say no, you're going to have to say, you know, that's, that's a non-negotiable for me or whatever it is for you. 
So if you feel too vulnerable to handle rejection and to give rejection, if you're too much of a nice guy that you can't, you can't turn a woman down, you can't say no, oh, well, she wants to come over, but I really don't want her to, you've got to do the inner work. Like I said, a strong, confident, independent, healthy woman, she wants you to say no. She wants you to be yourself. She wants you to be honest. She wants you to openly communicate. So if you're not at that point yet, you're going to be attracting those women that are going to take advantage of you. Listen. If you second guess, I know I said three, but I'm like on like how many tips? <laughs> if you're second guessing yourself all the time. Yeah. And I think that's probably for, for most of my clients, that's kind of like the aha moment for them is like, they are like, they, they, and a, and a few of them, they've actually gotten a really healthy, attractive, confident, strong woman, but yet they're, they're just totally second guessing themselves. Like, right? Because they feel uncomfortable. Like I feel uncomfortable. I'm much more, you know, comfortable being used and manipulated or controlled or whatever. So for them, that's like the aha moment. Like they're second guessing themselves, man. And so if you're still in that space of second guessing yourself, and, and usually it's in more than one area of your life, it's in your intimate relationships, but it, with your family and even at work, even sometimes you're not stepping in your power as a man, like that's a big, that's a big, oh gosh, I gotta do some work. And then lastly, again, I, I kind of already touched on this, but like if you have not spent the time defining, communicating, and upholding your boundaries, then you are not ready. That, you know, and I do like a three step process for how to have healthy boundaries, right? How to create those boundaries. It's, it's not just, like, oh, I, I, you know, want this, this, and this, because you will be tested. The, the, the tricky part comes in, and if you haven't seen my post yet in the group, I talk about this. The tricky part comes in when those boundaries are tested. And the old trauma-informed Terry in the past when she was, you know, triggered or tested, those boundaries are tested, would have gone, oh, well, I don't want them not to like me, or I don't want to hurt their feelings, or that, no, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm not responsible for your feelings right? I'm responsible for me and I'm responsible to my kids. So I'm going to uphold my boundaries. So really, really, really important to put in the work. And listen, I'm also not one of those people that um, there's, there's this, I, I don't know, there's a group out there that, that, that does this formula for however many years you are married is how, you know, take away six months, like blah, blah, blah. Like they, they do these calculations on however the time limit is that before you should go in and date. Well, listen, y'all, the, the, the highest percentage of divorces are gray divorces. Oh, I know y'all all just like, what? Yeah, 25 plus years of marriage, they're calling it. Although, you know, not really gray anymore. We're all like healthy and fit, those of us in middle age. So the vast majority of divorces today are those long, long-term marriages. And listen, if you do that math, like it's like 12 years before you can enter the dating pool again, which, you know, to me is just ridiculous. I, I do not say time heals all wounds. That is a big myth. I say it's what you do with the time. If you can, can you know, end that trauma and let go of those abandonment issues and heal your unresolved, like, yucky stuff inside of you and let go of that loneliness in just a few short months, man, like that's, that's where I want to spend my time. So it's not time heals all wounds. It's what you do consciously with the time and intentionally with the time. So listen, if you, you know, want to spend time working through this, letting go of the loneliness, letting go of like the controlling, needy women who come to you and take advantage of you. If you're ready to step into that next level of your life, do reach out to me. Okay, okay, Chris. Oh, there, finally, I see a comment. I don't know. I, I Sometimes I have a hard time seeing the comments. Yes, yes, Chris. Yes, that's a hard one. You nice guys, you think you're responsible for everybody else's feelings, right? I am not responsible for anyone else's reactions or anyone else's feelings. They're responsible for their feelings and their actions, right? So, and uh, when, you, when you own that and when you own that, then you'll attract other people who understand that as well. So Chris, 
I'd love for you to post that into the group too and tell them my biggest takeaway was when Terry said, I'm not responsible for anyone else's feelings, right? So when you own that and, and you like live it and breathe it, it's, it's so empowering. And listen, you're going to attract a whole different level of, of partner to you when you're, when you're in that masculine energy and you own yourself and you're your authentic, true version of yourself. So post your takeaways after watching the video. Post your takeaways in our group. I'd love to know what resonated with you. And listen, if you want to deep dive into to what's preventing you from having a he healthy, happy relationship going forward after divorce. I'm, I'm going to give you this, the, the keys and the strategies to help you have a healthy, happy relationship. Thank you, Chris. Mm, appreciate it. Listen, y'all, I'm going to set the link down below so we can uh, book a call and talk about your situation. And in the meantime, have a great weekend. If you need anything, I'm here for you. All right. All right. Mm, have a great week. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye.